Hi, it's Cassie and today we're going to make a mixed media card using a lot of really great Sizzix products. So I'm just going to get started right away. We are using the uh, layered stencils from the flowers collection. Looks like this. Really, really great. I'm so excited for this. Uh, we have a stamp set. It is a sentiment stamp set and it is called uh, Sunnyside Sentiments number nine. So we'll be using one of those. And then we have lots of other really great tools. The main tool we'll be using, we have all of our cardstock here from Sizzix as well. We will be using the uh, stamp and uh, stencil tool, and it is such a great resource. Um, so we'll mainly be using it for the stencil uh, placement. So I'm going to take this lid off, okay, and it just lifts right off the base here, and I'm going to set it aside for now. So I already have a, a sticky grid on here and <clears throat> you can see it's been used before, but it does not affect the use of it now. This ink is not going to come off or anything, so I'm just going to keep using it because why not? All right, and so um, the stencils we'll be using today, I've got my cardstock here. It's all cut and ready to go. It's all um, Sizzix cardstock, different st colors and styles here. We're mainly gonna be working on this piece of white um, cardstock that's been cut down. The total card size is five and a half by six, and then I've got some layers here. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is get the um, layered stencils here. and. <laughs> Excuse me, there are four layered stencils in this set, and we're going to be using all of them, but we're not going to use them in order necessarily. The, and you'll see why as we go along. But the first stencil here, if you can see, if I maybe, um, here I'll use this, um, you can see that it's that that swash of, uh, of like paint or whatever here. We are gonna use this, but we're gonna do it last, okay? So I'm putting aside stencil number one just for now, all right, and I promise we'll come back to it. We are gonna start with the flowers. So we have two, three, and four, and you can see I've used them before, um, and they are really fun and beautiful. So we're going to start with two. So. For the flowers here, we do want to make sure we work in order, and we want to make sure that we start with the lightest color of ink, or whatever you're using, whatever colors of ink you're using, and work up to the darkest, okay? So number two stencil, we're going to put down first, and it's it's kind of far down here. So let's, um, let's so this is when we get to decide like where on this grid we're going to start working. So I'm just going to put it on the second um, second row, and then I'm going to put down my stencil number two so I can see where it's going to sit. Okay, can you see that? And then I'm going to um, lift it and put my cardstock underneath. And actually, what I'll do is just take it off completely. I know that it's going to be right here. And, um, and I like to line up the um, paper to the stencil because... I want to make sure I have proper placement and it's straight and all of that. So I want my cardstock, it's not, it doesn't go the full length of this stencil, which is fine. You can do whatever you like. Um, and so I want to make sure it's lined up with the top. There's like a little etched line around here that makes a box. And I want to make sure that it is also straight. So I'm, I'm just sort of like holding them together. I'm putting the um, stencil back onto the pegs and then I'm just going to lay it all flat. And then I like to take my stencil back up just for this first part um, because I want to make sure, sorry, my nails aren't working very well. There we go. I want to make sure that this is pretty straight, okay? So I made sure it's straight on here, but I want to make sure it's straight also on the grid. Everything is good and lined up and that the paper is stuck down so it's not going to move while I work on top of it. All right, so now we're going back to stencil two, making sure it's pressed down all over. I really also like when the paper is a little smaller than the stencil, you can get um, nice um, adhesion to the, the base with the stencil. So everything is sort of held in place and nothing is gonna move. Okay, so now we need to get our ink. And today I'm gonna be using Catherine Pooler ink. 
Uh, and so since we're working lightest to darkest, I've got uh, Coral Cabana, Catching Rays, and It's a Girl. Okay, these are the three main colors for my flower. This green is for the stem, that is Martini. So these are the colors I want to use for the flower. So, so what, what I'm, I'm going to do is go get into my um, toolkit here. I love this toolkit. It holds everything really well. I've got a couple of um, sponge uh, daubers that are good for blending. So this is the actual base that goes onto the tool and then this is just an extra piece and I have one for cool and one for warm and that pretty that works pretty well for me. Um, and then I'm also going to get, while I'm in here, I'm going to get a palette knife uh, because we'll be using that in a little bit. And then I need an actual uh, tool barrel. Okay, so we'll put this back aside and we're going to start with um, this ink blending tool and I'm going to switch this for the warm one. Now you could get a bunch of these and have one for each color, maybe pink, orange, red, green, blue, whatever. Um, but, you know, this is fi it's fine. It works just fine the way it is. Okay making sure it's nice and flat, ready to go. So now this is the base, so I'm starting with the lightest. I am gonna do a little blending and you'll see as I go along, uh, but for the most part, we're gonna start with the lightest pink, which is called It's a Girl uh, from the Catherine Pooler line. And you don't need a lot of ink on here, especially with these um, ink pads, they're uh, very juicy. So I just start with a little bit and you can kind of see as you go, you know, when you need more. And this is a pretty, pale shade of pink, but you can see already it is giving us a decent amount of ink. All right, so I'm just kind of going around the edges, a little bit in the middle, just pouncing a little bit here and there, making sure that I've got good coverage everywhere. And I do, I like this, so let me get a little bit more up here. <clears throat> the edges are nice to get little extra color and then I am going to just keep on keep on going with the same um, sponge dauber here and I'm going into the catching rays which is the yellow and I just want to add a tiny touch of it to this side just to warm this side up just to give us a little bit of um, you know sh shading and dimension a little so it's a little more dimensional and less flat maybe the sun is coming from this side you know and it just just, uh, I don't know, just warms it up nice. Look at how pretty that is. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid back on here. And then I'm going to lift this because we're done with stencil number two. We can see how we're doing. So far, so good. Look at how gorgeous that is. Love the blending. Love the subtle gradation from one to the other. Okay, now we're going to go in with stencil number three. And, and it's probably hard to see on camera, but you definitely can see on the top. Uh, when you're looking at the stencil, it's etched right on the top. So it's really easy to identify. Uh, so you make sure you go in order. So again, I'm just, and now I noticed I left that paper in place. I didn't touch it. And now I'm just putting the next stencil down. And this is the beauty of this tool. It really allows you to have a lot of control over um, what you're doing here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back over with more of this catching rays and I'm gonna do it a little bit darker, okay, on the rest of the area. And because it's going over the pink too, it's gonna give us a little bit more of an orangey look. Okay, so I'm going over this whole section. And then I'm going to touch it with a tiny bit of the Coral Cabana. So as we're getting more, um, getting darker into this, and this time I'm going on the opposite side. Okay, so there we go. We've got a little bit of dimension and I'm going to take um, stencil number three off here. Whoops. Ooh, that's so pretty. I love that. Oh, that looks great. Okay, and then finally we've got stencil number four. And again, I'm leaving the paper right where it is. And I'm putting stencil number four down, making sure it's stuck nicely. And we're gonna stick with the Coral Cabana. And this is just gonna go right in the middle. <clears throat> and I'm gonna make it nice and dark, as dark as it can get. It's not a super dark color, but um, we're gonna make it as dark as it can get and it's just gonna give us a really nice dimension and contrast on this flower. So I'm going over it a few times 
There we go. Now, you see there's stems here, and I did get a little bit of that coral in that stem. That's okay. This is just a fun card that we're making. No big deal. No need to sweat it. Uh, but we are going to switch now to Martini, and I'm just going to use one color of green. And I'm going to, and I switched my foam pad, so now it's on the cool one, the cool colors, okay? And I'm just picking up a little bit of this, and I'm just kind of, I want to make sure I'm only getting it where this um, stem is, all right? And going over the whole thing here, and I'm just obviously stopping where the paper stops. It's okay if we don't have um, paper going all the way down the stencil. It's fine because this is your project. You get to do whatever you want with it. Okay, so I think we're pretty good. Looks good. Okay, so we'll have a nice dark green stem there. So now we can put that aside. Let's take off stencil four and see our beautiful flower. Isn't that gorgeous? Ooh, I love it so much. I'm gonna bring this whole thing up a little closer so you can see. And you know, you could make these flowers any color you want. You could do blues or purples. You could make purple flowers. Wouldn't that be lovely? Uh, so we just did like a pink and orangey coral type color and I really love the way that it looks. So now I said we were gonna use all four stencils. We've done the flower. I'm leaving this in place. Now we're going to bring stencil number one in, okay, and lay it on top of the, those beautiful flowers. Now notice that where the stencil is exposed, exposing the paper, it's perfectly covering up those flowers. Can you see that? So those flowers are protected underneath there, okay? So what we're going to do now is take some dimensional paste from Sizzix, and we're making this a mixed media card. How fun is that? So easy to do. Uh, you can really work with all the tools you already have. Just get yourself some dimensional paste. It's so amazing. Look at this tub will last forever too. Look at how much is in here. You don't need a lot for each um, application. So I'm gonna take this uh, foam pad off of here and I'm going to add the, um, the um, palette knife. Okay, so now comes the super fun part. Are you ready? We are going to use dimensional paste. So if you've never used it before, it's like, um, it's a bit thicker than icing, okay? It's a little more dense, but it, it applies the same way. So if you notice, I've got my palette knife here and I've put some dimensional paste on the back of the palette, okay? So can you see that? It's on the back of the palette, not on the top. And then we're just gonna pretend this is like a butter knife and we're gonna spread it on the paper, okay? So we're spreading butter through the butter knife. <laughs> so really, we're spreading dimensional paste uh, through this stencil onto our paper using this palette knife in our toolkit. And I'm just doing a nice thin layer. Doesn't have to be too thick. It's going to add so much beautiful texture to your card. Okay, so I've got a nice even layer. I've scraped along the edge here. You don't have to be super particular about it. It doesn't have to be like perfectly, you know, straight and even or scraped or whatever. It's just, um, we're just adding some texture. Then I'm going to wipe the rest back into the tub. I like to put as much of this in the middle of the tub as I can because it helps keep it uh, fresher longer. But the um, the really nice thing about the Sizzix dimensional paste is that um, it comes with this plastic lid that goes right back over. Um, so this goes right back over the top and just press lightly and then put your lid back on. And that really does keep a lot of the air out, which is nice. Because Before you lift this stencil, we're gonna do something really, really cool, okay? It's such a fun technique. I use it all the time and it's really, really qu quite great. So the stencil is still on top of the paper. Okay, so I've, I've put paper towel around it just because we're, gonna, we're about to spray with art spray and it tends to go everywhere. So I'm just sort of protecting the space around. I know that this stencil is down on top of this um, 
on top of this paper and it is secure so no worries there I do have two different kinds of art spray here I have um, hero arts two-tone metallic spray in fuchsia and gold and then I have dilution spray in after midnight and these two colors work really nicely together this one has some mica in it some gold mica so I'm just gonna shake it up and give it a good mix before we start this one doesn't need to be mixed okay so what I'm going to do is spray this Mmm, that's gorgeous. And then I'm going to use this darker spray on the bottom and let it work its way up. Okay, and then I'm going to leave it. Okay, and I'm going to lift my paper towels out of the way. Minimal amount of mess. And I have a little bit of pooling here. And so, so that it doesn't really leak underneath, I'm going to take the heat gun only on low heat because there is a stencil here and we don't know until we've tested it if the stencil is heat resistant and most of them aren't okay so I haven't tested it on a Sizzix stencil but we don't want to find out so we're going to put this on low heat and just give it a quick little zap to see if we can get just a little bit more dry and then I'm going to take a paper towel because I have a couple puddles here that I think could be a little problematic. So I'm going to lift some of the ink off of there. Okay. All right. Some of the spots that are just a little bit, a little pooling. Okay. That looks really good to me. Now I'm going to lift the stencil off and let's see what we get. <gasps> Whoa. Look at how cool this is. Oh my goodness. Before I lift this off, I'm just going to show you that is what you get look at that it is so so cool and um and also this area is raised up so once it's dry this has dimension and now it's got this cool sprayed effect on it as well that's swooping behind the um, flowers here so very very cool now we need to dry this and put it all together and we will have a very cool mixed media card okay so we're gonna peel this cardstock off of the back okay and it is still drying a little bit so I'm gonna set it aside to dry but we're gonna work on the sentiment piece okay so I'm gonna set this aside so beautiful I love it so much and then we're going to take um, a piece of white scrap and I'm just gonna move this out of the way we're actually gonna use the stamp part of this tool now and I'm gonna pick my stamp let's see I think I'm going to do to use the um, sending hugs maybe that's a nice one so we'll get the sentiment out here you could use any sentiment you want of course and I'm just gonna set it in here I'm gonna cut this out so it's no big deal I'm just placing it in here and then I'm going to use the um the lid for this to um, stamp this just in case i have to stamp it more than once we want to make sure that we've got perfect placement each time the one thing i will mention about this um, stamping tool is that uh, there's a grid side that's like textured and then there's a smooth side when you're using this for the stamping tool you want to make sure that your stamp is sticking to the the smooth side not the grid side okay or else you will have issues it, the, your stamp just won't stick to the grid so just make sure your smooth side is facing down and we're gonna lay down the lid of this we're gonna press it into our stamp just to make sure we um, have you know have it fully stuck down and then I like to put this sideways so that it's just easier for me to work on the stamping part of it so um, so I've got my stamp over here. Let me just move that a little bit. And I've just got some black ink because I think with all the colors that are on this card, it's, it'll be nice to have uh, just some basic black ink to uh, stamp this with. So, so I'm inking up my stamp here and then I'm just going to press it down onto the paper. You don't have to press super hard just kind of press everywhere make sure you're getting it fully covered but the great thing is if you miss a spot which I did I totally missed part of that end and I feel like it could be a little bit more 
solid, this is why I'm using my stamping tool so that I make sure I get really good coverage. So I'm just inking it up again and I'm gonna move this back over and then I'm gonna press down again and it will be in exactly the right spot every single time. Pressing down again until you're happy. Okay, I think I'm even gonna do one more time just to make sure it's really nice and inked up. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Here it is, one more time. So there, I've just stamped it three times and it's in exactly the same place every time. It's, it works great. So that looks fantastic to me. I think we're all done. So I will take my stamp off of here and then I will lift the um, paper off of the base here and then I'm gonna cut this out. But now I can still even use this again because it is in good shape. There's, you know, just the ink on there doesn't really affect as we saw, doesn't affect anything. And I also like to store it with this inside here on those pegs, just flat. Uh, it's just a nice way to store it so everything stays together and ready for me the next time I want to use it. Okay, so we are done with that tool for now. Um, now I'm just going to cut this in like into a rectangle, okay? And so I'm going to get my cutter out because I just want this to be nice and even. All right, so I've got a cutter here and I'm just going to cut this down on either on every side here so that it's pretty close to the stamped area. So there we have a nice matted uh, sentiment. And then let's bring our um, main piece back in. Oh. Now that it's dry, I'm going to use my express glue because it dries so fast and it's so great when you're doing layers like this. Um, you want to you want to have a little bit of time for wiggle room so you can move it around, make sure your matted layers are nice and even before it sets in place. So I'm going to just put a little bit around the edge of my card and then just a little bit in the middle there. Okay, and this is my express glue from Sizzix. And then I put it down onto my card base and I just kind of like wiggling it around also helps that um, glue move around and make it more sticky, <laughs> like stick faster. I don't know, it just kind of is magic. But it also gives me time to just kind of move this around and make sure it's where I want it. So now I'm just pressing, moving that glue all over and it is done. I mean, it's it dries quickly and it is super sticky, so it's going to work great. Same thing for this. I'm still going to be kind of delicate because I think it's dry, but sometimes it's not always perfectly dry yet. It does take a little bit of time for that dimensional paste to dry. So you just want to be careful and you also want to make sure you're not going to smudge it, you know. So maybe if you're making this, um, I would make it and then let it sit for a little bit or use your heat gun to dry it and then uh, put it down on your base. Okay, so once again, we have some wiggle room time, just a little bit, not a lot really, but enough to get it where you want it. And then we're going to gently press down. Um, okay, so I think it would be nice to have a little bit of ribbon in here. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to make a knot. But what I like to do when I do this is make sure it's about twice the length of the card. And then uh, just get some scissors out here, cut it. And then I'm going to make um, a, a knot. I'm not going to do a bow. Sometimes it's fun just to have a quick little knot here. And I keep it in a loop like this. And just make a knot. All right, pull it nice and tight. And then, you know, cut the ends off so they look good. And they're not too long. This, well, we'll see how it lands there. Okay, and then what I want to do is decide where it's going to go. I think it's going to go on this side more. Um, oh, I might need to put new glue here. That's okay. Um, so then I'm going to cut one side to be a little shorter because I want this to be more on the side. And then for this, I'm going to use um, just my tape runner. Okay. So you're going to get your tape runner out. Okay. And then we're going to put this um, on the card. All right. So I'm just putting it at the bottom section of this card and then honestly as long as you put tape around the sides it just wraps around nicely and this hasn't gone onto the card base yet so it's going to be just fine so we don't need all of that tail there we can just stick this down 
and it sticks really nicely. All right, and then I'm going to put a little bit more glue on here, cover up part of that ribbon, but just as a really nice way to finish that. Oops, there we go. That looks nice. And now I've got some pink sequins. It's always fun to just use a few little sequins here and there. These are super pretty colors. It's called Rose, and they're circles. And then, of course, for the sequins, I'm going to need my um, jewelry picker tool, or my little sticky tool here. which I always have ready to go because I use it a lot and it's just super handy. So it just goes on your um, maker tool and um, it's got a nice sticky end there so I can just pick up the sequins and stick them down where I want as I go. So let's see, I'm gonna use my express glue and just find spots to stick. And I just put a little dab of glue here and there. All right. We'll start with that and see how we like it. I'm going to put a big one, I think, down here. That's just kind of cool looking. And then maybe a smaller one up top. Nice. And I like the small ones around the words here. It just adds a nice little touch. I got a little too much glue, so I'm just going to pick it up with my finger there. It dries clear also, so it's not a big deal. Okay, there we go. And now all of this needs to stick down onto the card base, okay? So I'm just going to take my express glue, put it on the card base. The black um, uh, mat here on this frame covers this entire base. This is just going to be the base of our card, so we can open it right inside it and give it as a, as a gift. So I'm just going to move this around a little bit, make sure it's nice and stuck and straight. There we go. Okay, so there we are. This, this is the final card. Check this out, how pretty. So now you have a mixed media card. Look at all of that cool texture in there and the dimension of it. Oh, so, so pretty. Um, really lovely card and excited for you to maybe try this yourself and let me know what you think. Uh, if you enjoyed this card and found some inspiration here today, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. And also, if you want to learn more about Sizzix, you can visit Sizzix.com. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.